A while back, I taught y'all how to make a SIP, a sub-irrigated planter that's self-watering at super low cost. Since then, I've kept making them, but I've kept trying to make them bigger. Those five gallon ones are fine for herbs or beans or anything with a tight seed spacing, but mega monsters like squashes and indeterminate tomatoes really flourish when provided with more space. So I bought a couple 55 gallon rain barrels from Craigslist for $5 each and used a sawzall to cut them in half. I turned them into huge 25-ish gallon sips the same way as the little ones. There's a hole, some perforated pipe, perlite, and soil layered inside. These are fantastic. I can do a single pepper or a tomato and it'll blow the hell up all summer long. This one has just one jalapeno in it, but I'm gonna try to overwinter it so that we can pick an absolute peck of peppers next summer. I can also pack multiple things in one, which means that I only have to water and fertilize one feed tube from multiple plants. This one is a Genovese basil, a Thai basil, and a purple sweet potato vine just for decoration. I've got this one with a whole dang fig tree in it, and since I heard that figs typically benefit from being a tiny bit root bound, I can leave it in here for years until it's absolutely massive and then consider dropping it into the ground. Speaking of which, this old kumquat made its way into the ground right next to a pomegranate and a lemon, which are behind me. Hilarious to see what the old Bermuda grass thought of this landscape fabric. This is like equal parts comedy and tragedy to me. This is a mulberry, and I think it might technically be sort of illegal to buy here because of how crazy they pop off. They grow fast and tall and wide, and they drop this really delicious jammy fruit once a year. Homeowners apparently hate them because the dark fruit stains everything it touches, but how else are you gonna get incredible shade, lush greenery, and rare fruit all in the middle of the desert? Fools. I do still use these five gallon sips, mostly for decorative plants from Lowe's. I buy their tiny plants for like half the price and then keep them in a sip for a year so that they can double in size with very little effort. This crazy vining cactus will grow up to make dragon fruits one day. Lemongrass. Here's the plumeria that you all know and love from two years ago. It's dropping its leaves for the winter, which makes it very easy to show you how it finally bifurcated. Very happy to see it thriving, even with this scar that it got from being nibbled by Bree's pet rabbit, Aldo. It hasn't flowered yet, but I've been practicing my laymaking skills at Bree's grandmother's house on her plumeria for when the time comes. Whenever I talk about gardening, I always try to talk about how much failure is involved. So please allow me to discuss my biggest failure this year. This is a 275 gallon IBC tote. I bought two from Craigslist for $150 total and had the guy angle grind each one in half. They are food safe since they were only used to transport beverage syrups. And since each one is like four feet by four feet, you get a ton of planting space, a spot to build a trellis and just one feed tube for tons of plants. The idea was to make four of these and then tend to a big 64 square foot garden by watering the whole system with just four tubes once a month. And it worked. It worked so well that I had enough food to share with the wildlife. I was coming out to see that all the peas were getting nibbled on at night. It makes sense. A sugar rich crop being sampled by cold critters all winter. These IBC totes are slightly elevated off the ground. So families of rats started building nests underneath them. I couldn't move the giant sips because once they're filled with soil and water, you You'd need a forklift or something to move them. So I emptied them out, got rid of the nests, RIP Emil, the biggest rat the exterminator has ever seen. Believe me, I have the photos. Next, I moved and refilled two of them over here on the bricks where no rodent could ever burrow for protection. And that worked all summer long. This whole thing was full of zucchini and Armenian cucumbers. That's what these are. They get like three feet long and they smell exactly like the old cucumber melon scent from Bath and Body Works. But now as the sun changes its path, the house shades these all day. So nothing gets enough sun to flower and no flowers exist to bear fruit. Normally I would just pull these a couple of feet north to solve the problem instantly. But again, they weigh a ton. In the end, this is what all good gardeners tell beginners. Don't try to do too much too quickly. But like so many fools before me, I was seduced by seeing what's possible and thought, this time it's different. I thought the technology could save me, but nature humbled me as she does to us all. So last time I gave a shout out to Leon who taught me all about sips. And this time I wanna mention Angela from Growing in the Garden. She lives in the area, so her content is extremely relevant and localized. She posts like once a month with a big list of tasks to do that month, things to expect and what to plant. And it's really an insanely valuable resource to get information from someone nearby. If you're in or around Phoenix, check her channel out. And if you're not, find someone local to you or even better, become that resource for someone else. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have got some shade tolerant lettuces to plant in my big dumb raised beds. Ta-ta. 
Brightland has paid to be mentioned at the end of this video. Brightland is a brand of olive oils and vinegars that offers preservative-free, filler-free goods for discerning buyers. The olive oil comes in a fancy opaque bottle, which can help uh, prevent the oil from degrading in quality under the UV light in your kitchen. They have different blends like grassy tasting awake and nutty tasting alive, and they're both a real punch in the teeth. Try a spoonful of their olive oil just by itself and you'll know what I mean. The brand claims that their oil contains five times the antioxidants as conventional extra virgin olive oils, which should yield a sharper bite. And these things have some absolute fangs on them. I got the Essential Capsule, which is a box set of two oils and two vinegars, and the combination could make a pretty gift for the seasoned or aspiring home cook in your life. Try Brightland now. Get 10% off when you click the link in my description box and get your first essential capsule.